Pierre Nancy Dinardo, Chair of the Democratic Party in, Party in Connecticut. Uh, my name is Andrea Celli. I am an Associate Professor of Italian Studies at the University of Connecticut. Um, in recent interviews to local newspapers, you shared the persuasion that Governor Edward Lemont has done a great job on important issues in the state and that uh, he would be a successful candidate if you run again for governor in, in 2026. In uh, your opinion, one of the strengths of the governor would be his track record on taxes. As a parent, a taxpayer of this state and the chair of Italian studies at the University of Connecticut, I, I am reaching out to you, a former educator and the leader of a party that is close to my views on so many important issues, to share my dismay for Governor Lamont's decision to defund public higher education in Connecticut. I came to the University of Connecticut 10 years ago, attracted by what at the time seemed a university with ambitious plans of investment in research. However, Governor Lamont and Yukon's Board of Trustees' decision to defund the University of Connecticut is a manifestation of content for the work of my colleagues and I. Um, last December 4th, President Radenka Mar Maric communicated to our Senate that the university would be facing a 15% bu 15 budget cut over the next five years. As some deans explained to us, this means it a total of 19.1% cut because Yukon will also have to cover an additional 4.35% cost uh, to fund uh, salary increases that are not being funded by the state. And this is because uh, since 2022, despite, despite mounting inflation and loss of purchasing power of our salaries, as the salary of every citizen of this state and this country, Governor Lamont refused to fund uh, uh, the increase after years of salary uh, freeze. The state implemented budget cuts throughout the pandemic years, while Connecticut was uh, collecting unprecedented tax revenues that are reflective of massive market gains that benef benefited mostly the wealthiest. Yukon dealt with a 6% budget cut in the last three years. Italian studies, the, the program I chair, has been cut to the bone. And yet, this appears to be not enough. In 2024, Yukon's budget, Yukon's budget cut will be more than three times, three times that of previous years if the position of the administration does not change. At various meetings, Provost Anne Daleva has been candid about the need to fire some faculty, a measure that is incomprehensible given the current state of Connecti Connecti Connecticut finances. But I am assuming that this would uh, make happy traditional critics of state spending in public education. These glad tidings reached by word of mouth thousands of faculty and staff members right before the holidays. And they were presented as a plan, not as a proposal. There has been no serious effort to engage with the academic body at large, unless we count as a form of engagement, a survey that the Office of the Provost circulated in September to gauge staff's key priorities with the enticing promise, promise of being, uh, I'm quoting, selected uh, at random to receive a uh, $50 gift card. At UConn, as at most uh, US public higher education institutions, decisions are made behind closed doors by board, uh, boards of trustees that often are chaired by powerful men with careers in finance. Foreign faculty members like me quickly realize that they are at the receiving end of a chain of command uh, rather than active and valuable 
valued members of the body capable of contributing to the governance of the institution. Uh, according to estimates, the cut is so large that it will entail getting rid of entire units. Very small language programs like Italian studies are of course ideal targets, but major programs will not easily survive either. As the department head explained, I am quoting, even if we eliminated all our graduate programs, we would still be just over halfway to what we would need to cut, end of quote. And without the graduate programs, as you probably know, we would not be able to form future generations of researchers and teachers from Connecticut, for Connecticut, or to offer most of our courses. We cannot come to terms with what appears to be the ultimate and ideal goal of Governor Lamont and Yukon's Board of Trustees. Like every other state university in Connecticut, Yukon's administration recently announced to the students and their families increases in tuitions, dining and housing rates, while at the same time has been asking departments to expand the number of seats in classrooms. But this is the news that students and their families didn't receive. As a fellow educator, you surely understand that this means for the students less quality of teaching at a higher price. In recent years, faculty like me have enthusiastically embraced the idea of becoming a R1 research institution in which first generation and historically underrepresented student population could blossom. Yet I have the impression that Governor Lamont and the Board of Trustees believe that Yukon should drastically lower the ambition and quality of its education to meet the needs of these new students. While sons and daughters of affluent families will go to elite university to receive a selective education with adequate support and enticing career opportunities, Yukon will be uh, tasked with creating a malleable workforce ready to fulfill the needs uh, of the local businesses and labor market and low cultural ambitions. I venture to ask you, as the Connecticut Chair of the Democratic Party, if this is the vision that your party has to offer to the youngest in Connecticut and to their families in terms of social, cultural and economic ambitions of the state. Is getting rid of investments in public education public higher education a trademark of uh, your party what frustrates us the most is not just the elitist ideology that speaks through the policy or policies of governor Lamont it's the top-down decision-making process the hypocritical use of language of inclusivity while the reality is a lack of inclusivity and real democratic debate on the future of education in a flagship R1 public university the trend of state disinvestment from public education is presented by leaders like Lamont as an undisputable political belief and need. Recently, we have witnessed similar cuts happening to other universities across the country, often in states run by democratic governor, governors. It is regretful to see Yukon on the same path. Is this what the Democratic Party has to offer to its people? Is this the plan in order to win the elections? All this considered, I'm not sure Governor Lamont and the Democratic Party would find enthusiastic supporters among the families of Yukon's employees in the 2026 elections. We are reaching out to you in the hope that you would consider engaging with us and with our concerns. We need help to change the mind of Yukon's administration and to create opportunities for public debate around these important matters. We do not understand the optics of such urgent disinvestment of the state from a system of public higher education that is the pride of this state. If I may also address you as an Italian-American, uh, I am also concerned about the future of Italian as a taught language in a state with one of the highest concentration of Italian-Americans in the country. Thank you so much for listening.